My name is Leanne McNulty. I'm originally from Ireland and I've been in Taiwan for almost four years teaching English and also volunteering and getting some experience with NGOs. Uh, before that, I was in Australia for uh, two and a half years and one of the jobs that I did there was also fundraising with a, a charity called Plan International. Once I started to get into more volunteer work and fundraising, um, one of the reasons that I came to Taiwan was to save money to go back to university. So I applied for a university course and didn't get accepted. And then I was like, hmm, what should I do next? Um, so I decided to use the money that I'd saved up and um, my contract was up at work. I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue as a teacher for another year, so I decided to take a break and go to Vietnam and do some volunteer work there. When I arrived initially, it was really hard to get in touch with anybody. Um, in the past, I volunteered in Cambodia, uh, but I went with, I booked everything before I went, and I went with an established charity that you have to pay money, but they provide you with uh, accommodation and uh, sort of a guide, some guideline. This time I decided to do by myself because I was going for longer. The first thing that I figured in Vietnam was that there isn't that much information online for, for people that want to volunteer. I think Cambodia is a popular volunteer sort of destination and there's a lot more support online, there's a lot more tips on what you should do, what you should look out for. Uh, most of the information that I got was through blogs actually and Facebook groups. Um, but as far as like websites go in English, there wasn't that many and it was kind of hard to find anything. So I think the, the main thing there is that um, the language is a big deal because I guess the level of English speaking in Taiwan is much higher than it is in Vietnam. Um, the other thing is the resources. If it's not a big charity, there's not going to be somebody who's able to set up and maintain a website or a blog. So that's why I started to write my blog to maybe help other people that were going to volunteer in Vietnam. Um, and through my past experiences in Cambodia and just through talking to people in Vietnam, um, there is a few pretty big red flags that you should avoid if you're going to, to volunteer. So I thought it was important to share that. One of the major things, uh, issues in, in the media also that people are concerned about with volunteer work is uh, orphanage tourism which is a huge problem in Cambodia, but it's also starting to creep in in Vietnam as well, I think. Um, which is basically unauthorized or non-governmental organized uh, uh, orphanages. Um, oftentimes the kids are not even orphans, they've just been dropped off by their parents because they can't feed all of their kids. Um, but they're purposely kept in pretty bad conditions to attract more, uh, more people to come. And so there's a lot of issues there with volunteers. The first thing is that a lot of the kids are going to have some abandonment issues. And if you are a short-term volunteer and you form a bond with the kids when you leave, it can be really detrimental to them and can really help or can really cause more problems. Um, there's just a constant cycle of people going in and out of their lives. There's no stability. And I think that's one of the biggest points is that it's just unfair to the kids to um, to just have them be forming bonds and have people constantly leaving when most of them already sort of feel abandoned anyway by their parents or by their government as well and, and that nobody wants to help them. So that's a big thing. Um, another thing with orphanage tourism is they often charge you huge sums of money to stay in a guest house and they provide you with meals and stuff like that and most of the money goes into the back pockets of the people that are organizing. Um, so that's a, another big issue. Obviously traveling is a, like a fantastic experience and if you have the opportunity to do that, you should. But there are so many ways that you can help that don't involve orphanage tourism. Um, first of all, just being a responsible tourist is you know, something that we should all be doing when we travel. You know, make sure that you're being uh, culturally sensitive, make sure that you're being kind to the environment wherever you're going. You know, just not um, being loud and rude and just small things like that is the first thing. Second of all, um, I, I once volunteered at an animal rescue center, which was a really great experience as well. Um, just giving something back to the country rather than orphanage tourism. It's not really about your experience rather than about the experience of the people that you're supposed to be helping. So it's more, it's really important to think about your motivation. How much time do you have to give? Are you, um, 
are you trained to work with kids that have some problems? Um, do you have any experience with kids that have, um, you know, maybe been abused or, um, a, you know, adopted or, um, you know, at, at that level of poverty? If you don't have any experience in an area like that, it might not be the best uh, thing for you to do just like you wouldn't do it in your own country You're not just gonna arrive at a troubled teenagers house and try to help them out without any experience because You're probably just gonna do more damage than than good But in saying that you can also work with the organizations that look after them, but just do something different fundraise promote for them um, In Vietnam, there's a lot of restaurants that are run by street kids So even just eating at those restaurants is doing something really good uh, tell everybody on your your Instagram and your Facebook how great the food is there get more people to go there um, All those little things without you having to do like the gap year thing are all really helpful um, the uh, Especially the restaurants because they're learning how to manage money. They're learning how to cook or how to serve They're probably practicing their English with the tourists um, and they're yeah they're learning like lots of life skills as well a lot of people teach English in Vietnam and Cambodia that have they just speak English um, I wouldn't advise that because it's not the it's not the best way that you can put your time and your skills uh, into a project um, yes learning English is, is important but if you're gonna volunteer as an English teacher I think it's important to at least have a TEFL or some sort of English teaching um, experience just so that you can give the kids the right English class, you know, if you can, if you already experience it means that it'll be more valuable to them that you're a good teacher and that you know what you're doing. If you're not a teacher, there's tons of other options that you can do. As far as volunteering, there's other things that you can do as well that I think are really cool that will give you experience as a volunteer before you work with kids or anybody that's like a high risk. Um, for example, when I was in uh, Vietnam, I met um, some a really cool project called Green Youth Collective, I think they're called, uh, which is a permaculture charity. Uh, mostly foreigners, they set it up in Vietnam, I think some of them had gone to teach English, and they bought a plot of land on, on the countryside outside Saigon that they um, completely developed themselves in, um, into like a permaculture farm. And their idea is to use that as their base and their education center to then train young Vietnamese how to grow and install gardens in the city, um, grow their own vegetables, grow their own herbs. So it's a really, really cool project.